Hey, I'm CJ and welcome to my workshop. Today I want to discuss good value AI inferencing GPUs, one in particular. Before getting into it, I really want to discuss what value means in this context. And to me, value means really good performance per dollar, as well as being able to do a wide variety of inferencing tasks without spending that much money. Because being able to get a lot of bang for your buck, you may not be able to do everything, but I think the, some of the main things that you should be able to do with the GPU is speech to text, text to speech, image generation, um, vision models, as well as large language models. I think all five of those seem pretty critical to me. And that's what we're gonna discuss here today. The adventure into value GPUs started through a project called Geppetto. Geppetto is an AI inferencing service that I built with some friends. We basically put together a bunch of computers that we already had onto a network to serve AI inference for other people. One of the, the things that I began offering was Moondream 2. And Moondream 2 runs quite slowly on the Mac minis, unfortunately, or, or some of the compute that we had laying around. So I, it began the hunt for what would be a really good cheap GPU that can run Moondream really fast. And then from there, well, it's like, okay, maybe we can do more than just running Moondream. In fact, many of the GPUs run multiple services at once. And I think that that is also something that makes a value GPU. Can you run Whisper and Moondream at the same time, for example, and maybe even Llama 3, 7 billion or 8 billion? I think that would, makes a value GPU to me. So now that we've gone through value, let's talk about the GPU. This is the NVIDIA P102-100. This is an old crypto mining card, has no display outputs, but it has 10 gigs of VRAM. It's very similar to a 1080 Ti, and it's also very, very similar to the NVIDIA P40, which many people know in the local Llama community. So I think this is a very interesting GPU. It is only $60. Every other GPU, um, you'll see the prices of them over here. They're much more expensive than this. And this is a quite a capable card. And given the value propositions that we've talked about so far, it'll be interesting to see how it performs. Can it run all of these things respectively? Does it fail at some of them? So for the benchmarks today, all of them are running on my benchmarking rig here, which is an AMD Epic 7352 with 128 gigs of RAM. We have four kinds of models that we want to test, like large language models, vision models, stable diffusion, and whisper. 10 gigs of VRAM, 250 watt TDP, a bunch of CUDA cores. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Let's get started with the large language model benchmarks. We can see overall, it does good on relatively small models, 40 tokens per second, even on Llama 3 8 billion is really solid, I think. Um, that's more than enough to get by with and honestly still will provide a pretty nice experience for you as a person using the large language model. We can see that directly as we look at the time to first token, which is as soon as you'll actually see the response, two and a half seconds for Llama 3 8 billion is still quite fantastic. Let's quickly discuss prompt processing speed. This is how fast the large language model effectively understands what you are asking it. We can see from the benchmarks that it's much slower than the top end GPUs, the P102 is, but on the whole, it's still so fast that I don't think it really will impact you. Maybe if you're doing a ton of embeddings or something that need to be generated, you'll, you'll see some performance impact, but hey, on the whole, it's, it's pretty solid. As we move into vision, uh, we're testing Moondream 2 here. That's the only one we're testing currently. It's a very small vision model. And when we look at this, you can start to see some quirks of things is the M1 Pro, for example, it's prompt processing speed is really small. It's really slow. Where it's text generation speed is pretty reasonable. But what this ends up cumulatively kind of showing us is the time to first token of getting a response back from the model takes a long time for a MacBook Pro, but is still very quick on a GPU. 
Now we can take a look at the creation side. So running diffusion models like Stable Diffusion XL. And across the board, you can start to see, hmm, the P102 is a bit slow. And that's the curious thing. So the creation benchmark is run in comfy UI with the default settings, so medium VRAM. And unfortunately, this GPU, because of its PCI Express Gen 1 by 4, is really slow to load models. So you can see the overall time to get an image from Comfy is much longer than even the P40 with basically the same GPU. So far, we've seen them basically punch at exactly the same weight, but image creation is one where it is slower, at least in Comfy UI on the medium VRAM setting. And finally, we can take a look at Whisper. And Whisper is great. You get a 10 times speed up. And what that means is if you put 100 seconds of audio in, it takes 10 seconds to get the audio transcribed. That's what that means. So I think the performance on this is extremely respectable. 10x is great. Um, of course, you see the 4080 doing double of that, but you know, double of it for 16 times the price. In conclusion, I think the P102 does a fantastic job on the benchmarks generally. It definitely struggles with image creation, but if that's something you do infrequently, I think it's more than enough. The biggest thing I think about all these benchmarks is this GPU gives you the opportunity to play with a lot. And I think maybe that's what's the most valuable is for $60, you get to play with local inference and maybe get involved in the community. And to me, that's a wonderful opportunity for the price. Even compared to something like the P40, you know, I, I find the P102 almost to be a better value than the P40 in a lot of ways. While the P40 can run some bigger models with the more VRAM, I am personally not interested in running larger models at home if the token generation speed is slow. For me, that's just not appealing. So personally, I would pick the P102 pretty much any day over the P40. I don't even like plugging this into my benchmark rig because it's loud and annoying. I don't enjoy having loud things nearby me. If I had a server room, yeah, I would have one of these. And that's what it's built for. I personally don't want a server room in my house. I would rather rent a server online. For $160, you can rent a lot of GPU time. And I would much prefer to rent GPU time if I was running bigger models. In conclusion, I think the P102 is a fantastic GPU for the price. It is old. It is not the fastest. It can't run all of the models you might want to run but it can run many of them. And personally, I think constraints are interesting and being constrained to running only small models is cool. And I think we'll see more of it in the future as more devices like Max and stuff have local inference. I don't think local inference is going away and this is a way to play with some of the cutting edge and see what you can do with it. And you don't need a ton. I think that's important. And I also think it's cool that this is old crypto mining gear that you can upcycle for something new. Yeah, we'll use more power than something new, but it's kind of maybe still better than putting in a landfill. We At least something to be debated about. So anyhow, I appreciate you for watching. I hope uh, you learned something and I hope you have a great day. You may have noticed my right eye has a little bit of a scar or something, or it's a little puffy. And that's because I was free soloing a slack line above water and I fell off of it poorly. And here's the video. Enjoy. Sweet. I don't really know what you guys are. Damn. Wow. <laughs>